everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Um, my name is Chantel, and I'm the speech pathologist that has been lucky enough to work with Cass. Um, she has quite the amazing um, journey that she's going to share with you today. She's worked extremely hard on this presentation, and I'm so happy that we're here at this point and that we are ready to listen to Cass's journey from her perspective. Give it up for Cass.
a week later, I just uh, kind of lost my mind. I saw Connor and he asked me, oh, Kat, how was your day? And I told him, what are you talking about? He's like, oh, weren't you working today? And I just had no idea what happened that day. And that was when I went back to Burnaby Hospital and I got sent to the ER and then eventually to the ICU. And even more extremely, when I talk about you know having hallucinations and not feeling like myself, um, Connor was missing for the whole night, uh, October 27th. Eventually, the next day, my dad came to see me, and I somehow did not like seeing my dad in front of me. So my dad called Connor, saying like, "Hey, Cass really is trying to like run away from the hospital. You better come." And he gave me the phone thinking talking to Connor on the phone would help me, but instead of talking to Connor, I just like picked up the phone and like threw it across the room and broke it. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> um, so yeah, on October 27th, I went to the hospital in Burnaby, and between that time and before I got diagnosed, I got a lot of diagnostic tests. So for example, I got EEGs, things attached to your brain. Um, I got CT scans. Um, MRIs and lumbar punctures to kind of get samples to see if they could test what's wrong with me. I also got a few treatment trials, which means they were trying to see if something would work to help me get better. So IVIGs, IV steroids, and also I was treated for maybe thinking I had a psychiatric problem. So they gave me electroconvulsive therapy, which is basically like shocking you to get you get better. It didn't work. <laughs> Um, and eventually, on November 16th, I got a test back from BBC, officially diagnosing me with ANMDARE. And that's when I was transferred to uh, Vancouver General Hospital for special treatment. So from then on, um, November to March, I got a lot of treatment because they now knew what was wrong with me. But it seemed like I was still getting worse and worse. They gave me a lot of treatments like plex therapy, more IVIGs. Um, Tuximab is a drug that is often used for people who have this illness. It didn't seem to work. So they also gave me some kind of drugs that were similar to chemotherapy. So that's how I lost my hair during that time. And also I was given some interventions because in the beginning I was not able to like eat or breathe or drink by myself. So instead of like having things like stuck in my nose or my mouth, they gave me a feeding tube that was stuck to my stomach instead, and a breathing tube. So I had the scar um, on my neck, and also an arterial line on my arm to get blood samples, and a hip bend, funny word, hip bend line uh, where I got uh, my medication. And all of these were kind of intervented just to like, keep me alive. And between that, they were also doing lots of tests for tumors. They were always thinking like, there has to be a tumor because you know a lot of cases were had tumors involved with them. So they were thinking like, okay, we'll just have more CT scans, more MRIs, ultrasounds, PET scans, and they were thinking of, okay, like we can't find a tumor, but maybe we can just take out her ovaries, blow up the tubes, maybe that will help. And that was not a great idea from my family and Connor's perspective because if I did that, I wouldn't be able to have babies. And also having hormone therapy for the rest of your life would suck a lot. <laughs> so around that time, um, a doctor named Dr. Harazdo, she's a neurologist at EGH, and she was the one who kind of um, gave the opinion that maybe I didn't need to take out my ovaries, so don't try it. Okay. Um, and around early March, I was eventually weaned off of continuous monitoring on my EEG, so that meant like I was not having as many seizures, and I just had like periodic EEGs after that. And it was Dr. Carruthers, who had seen me earlier in January, saw me again around March, who gave me a kind of uh, green light or hope for my family and Connor that I was actually starting to get better. After that, I was still at BGH for a few months and a couple months, and then BGH was, uh, BGH was like, hey, 
um, river, you can go back to your eye hospital. The <laughs> eye like hospital are like, oh, you know, we have a lot of patients coming in and out. You don't really need us. You can, you know, go back to your home hospital or wherever your address is. So at the time, I lived in Burnaby. I was sent back to Burnaby, and that was when I started doing a little bit more things like physio, where I would start to learn how to like stand up with support, um, sit in a wheelchair for a really long time, like two hours, three hours. <laughs> and I also tried to communicate more, so Connor brought me a wet, uh, whiteboard to write on. I didn't really know how to draw on it or write on it very, very well, but it helped a bit. I also started like trying to talk, but I couldn't really make sounds very well, um, but I was still getting better. And when I was in Burnaby, they were just seeing if I could get well enough to start a rehab. So at some point, a podiatrist gave me the green light to go to, guess your office. <laughs> yeah. So on July 5th, I arrived at Deer Strong um, to do real rehab, including physiotherapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy, and so on. Um, and I stayed there for about three months, doing all this therapy, and finally they were like, hey, three months, you're up. <laughs> you have to graduate. So I graduated as an outpatient. Strong. And being an outpatient means that you still have to do a lot of therapy outside, but now you're at home, so that's kind of nice for me. Um, and while I was at you know, all these hospitals getting all this treatment, I got a lot of care from all the people around me, like my family, my dad, who could visit me a lot, my mom, Connor, of course, and Wendy came once in a while too. She even gave me a hug. Sunflower. But Connor uh, upped her because he gave me a bouquet of real flowers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at some point, I also had some friends who were able to visit me during that time when I got a bit better. Um, they couldn't visit me in the hospital, but they visited me outside of the hospital, like outside, or we would go out when I was allowed to. And my wonderful friend, Rihanna, got me this cute, slightly terrifying bubble tea session <laughs> to comfort me while I was sick. Um, and yeah, I had a lot of support and love, and I got lots of these treatments and rehab, so it's really hard to, you know, describe everything and have everyone understand, so I made a short video to kind of show what happened during that time from late recovery in DGH, so I got to be as strong. Here we go.
I know where she's going now.
couldn't have gone this far and recovered without all the support and help from people around me. Thank you for believing in me.